everybody, it's Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, it's been a while since I put up my last video, or at least it feels that way to me. I normally upload a lot more, but uh, things have been kind of rough behind the scenes recently, and I kind of had to do a little bit of work to get things back to the way they were before on the channel. The content that you were most familiar with, we were having trouble getting that going because of reasons. All I can say of that is sometimes life happens and whenever you end up in a situation, sometimes you have to play catch up and that's kind of what happened there. So I had to shift my focus for a little bit. Apologies for the delays on some of these videos because we actually didn't even have the resources to make them. But we got that squared away now. I'm happy to be back and I'm ready to get rolling here. That being said, Especially if you miss me, make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you got that bell on. Plenty of weather to talk about still. That never changes. So let's go ahead and get into that, shall we? So while I've been away, I still have been keeping track of everything, albeit I wasn't able to do so quite as efficiently as I was before. I did pay attention to some of the severe weather events that we had going on recently over towards the southeast and over towards the plains. And we can expect more of those in the future, but for right now, especially after today where we have a marginal risk for severe storms, we can expect a little bit of a break after that. There is a, there's no severe weather threats for the next few days. And then on top of that, there's no areas of concern for right now. However, I always do bring this up whenever I do these longer range forecast videos. Day five, this is March 31st. Predictability is too low once again. We've gone from potential too low to pretty much being confident that there's not gonna be severe weather too uncertainty once more and this is going to persist from days five through eight again keep in mind if you did happen to watch my last video i talked about towards the end of this month in the very beginning of april here about a severe weather threat here and we're still seeing that being reflected here on the gfs and the euro look for the euro right here in the bottom left corner but if we go ahead and push this forward here main thing of course that we always start out by looking for is a trough <clears throat> and you don't really see anything stout and then all of a sudden this feature comes into the picture here and this is a pretty deep digging trough right here as well it's a positively tilted trough but this has more than enough potential to set the stage for a severe weather event down the line here could be a couple different points of interest here I'm thinking that maybe as of right now we might have to watch this area over here towards maybe Nebraska and Kansas and maybe even towards Texas and Oklahoma once again as we head into the afternoon of this upcoming Sunday. Then as we go beyond that point, we may be watching storms forming along the front here as we head into the first and into the second here. Could be a secondary area of interest over here also towards the Ohio Valley as well, right around this little arch here. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on this as well as we continue to go forward here. It's a pretty stout storm system, but in this situation as of right now, I don't think we're gonna have quite the same cold air like we had with the last system that would result in blizzard-like conditions like what we've been seeing recently. So, like I said, Mainly going to be worried about severe weather on this one. Not really thinking too much of the wintry side of this one. I don't really think there's going to be much of one at all at this current time. Maybe out towards the west might be a different story. Now as we continue to go forward here, we'll see this storm system head out and a new one's going to come in right behind it. Now keep in mind, we're starting to get closer and closer to no man's land here. Well, we're pretty much already in it after 200 hours. But if this verifies, which we've been kind of keeping an eye on as well, because there were two systems that I was watching in the last video that I made. This is uh, towards the 5th and into the 6th. If this comes into play and it's showing a little bit more of a neutral tilt, not quite the positively tilted trough like, we would be, like we've been seeing lately, this could maybe have increased potential for severe weather down the line. Uncertainty with this is quite high given the time frame that we're looking at. 252 hours is a long time, and I mean long time but if this comes into play here we could be looking at a uh, deep southern plains threat maybe even a uh, southeastern threat pretty broad warm sector out ahead of this too you can see it being reflected with this trough right here as well so with that being said definitely going to be keeping an extra closed eye on the 6th through the 8th as we continue to go forward here 
This storm system also has a uh, pretty strong area of low pressure here based off of what I'm seeing here. These contour lines, the tighter that these are in on each other, usually the stronger the forcing, and it's usually reflective of a really strong area of low pressure. This will be considered a mid-latitude latitude cyclone here. But if we continue to move forward, this looks like it'll eventually work its way out of here by the 10th, and then after that, we'll have to be watching for a little bit of a, a little bit of a cool down, not necessarily a cool down, but a cool down in severe weather, I would say at this point. But all things said here, especially as we go forward into April, I wouldn't expect an increase in activity with severe weather here. And also another thing to watch for will be this flip flop of temperatures as we continue to go forward here. What we were just looking at was the wind map, but we're looking at the jet stream. And why that's significant is specifically because we're usually able to tell what's going on with the warm and cold air at the surface based on what's going on with that upper level jet. When we have those troughs, you'll see cold air like this start to push further down to the south, depending on how far that jet stream will dig. And you'll kind of see this more as we go forward here. You'll see cold air in this region really start to dig down further as we head towards the 31st. Right now we're in the 30th and then here comes that cold air starting to kick in right here. And it's not a significant amount of cold air, but also another telltale sign for maybe some severe weather potential. It's also the warm air that we're seeing here. And then also, if you look over to the bottom left corner here, we have the dew points. We're looking for our moisture return. What we're trying to look for is a common point between these two areas or combination plot even if you want to get a little bit more mathy and technical so to speak but fact of the matter is here these are very much showing a signal towards severe weather again like I was saying maybe towards Kansas maybe also towards Nebraska Oklahoma is another point of interest and then maybe even Texas as well then eventually as this cold front continues to develop we'll see a lot of storms forming along that boundary and watching that push off to the east here what does concern me about this also is the fact that we get a pretty stout warm sector over here towards the southeast as we head into the second. So it could be multiple days of severe weather once again. Not a guarantee because like we saw with the system on the 24th, very high potential for tornadoes, but that didn't verify for a number of reasons. If you want to see what some of those breakdowns are, then you can actually uh, check out our memberships program. We'll get into that little segue later though. But fact of the matter is here, the potential for severe weather is very much prevalent as we get into the start of April here. And then once again, as we start to see that cold air begin to come in more, we see a little bit more cold air take out, take over towards the West. And what we end up having here is called a negative PNA where it's colder out to the West, warmer out to the East. And we definitely see semblance of this as we get into the sixth and beyond, which is when our next severe weather setup comes into play. Very broad warm sector here comes into play. And then with that next storm system, if that does verify, like I said, that could spell trouble here as we continue to go forward, especially as we go from the eighth into the ninth. So like I said, a lot to keep track of here in the uh, short term and the long term as well. We'll have a video for the April outlook coming really soon especially since we're kind of behind on content right now we're going to be potentially doing a few daily doubles here and there so like i said make sure you have that bell on here but last but not least we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our radar could look like this is just more or less a simulated radar or the best version of a simulated radar we could find for looking up to about 16 days so that being said we'll go ahead and start out with this current storm system that was a pretty big troublemaker over here off to the west especially towards the central plains that moves out by tonight by tomorrow night and then as we go into friday here we see our next system start to come in out towards the west see a lot of mountain snow mainly over towards the west and there is some potential for some wraparound snow on the back side of this low pressure here but it's really going to be towards monday heading into tuesday where we start to see potential for severe weather uh, GFS in particular is kind of anticipating a lot more activity towards Texas, but I do think that there is a chance that we could get a little bit of activity over here just off to the east of where this low pressure is. It really depends on how this warm sector pans out along with the moisture return. But like I said, I do see a couple areas of interest in regard to severe weather here. And then, of course, as anticipated, storms form on that front 
and we do get a nice little shield of snow here actually compared to what i was thinking before there is still a chance that this does not verify but if this does we could still see a nice little swath of heavy snow here right on that nebraska and iowa line here eventually this warm area of course is going to win out and then we'll probably see that snow threat uh, continue to diminish as we head through parts of wisconsin and then eventually into the great lakes further north it goes the snow threat will start to increase but that's going to be more so north of the border of course here's our cold front here that's going to be causing our showers and storm activity over here marginal chances of severe weather probably possible as we get into the third year i would say and then after that point we'll be watching our next storm system roll in here you can start to see that snow beginning to decrease more since we have more warm air with this system and then interestingly enough we see a lot of activity forming along that boundary once more and then like i said right around the eastern half of that uh cold front here especially towards where that low pressure is we could be seeing maybe additional potential for severe weather like i said this time frame though it's kind of hard to be confident in what this look is right now so we continue to go forward see increased storm activity over towards the gulf more potential for severe weather with that setup as well and then as we continue to go on here we'll watch this storm system clear out and then the following after that we see a couple more chances of severe weather not quite as stout as those last couple systems we were just talking about and this is pretty much how we're going to close out that 16 day period so far Keep in mind, this is very much prone to change. But that being said here, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Appreciate you guys welcoming me back. Hopefully this video does well. That being said, either way, keep stay tuned. A lot more content coming. Hope to see you again soon. That being said, Time Edward Weatherman signing off. Have a good night, you guys.